everyone, how are you today? Um, this video is covering two topics, WWE 2K22 and video games I liked back in the day as rational games as a kid, and WWE Smackdown match we saw it for March the 11th, 2022, and alongside main event. Let's talk about the matches first. Main event sucked. Bear Mahal quickly defeated a jobber. Shump, Benjamin, and Cedric Alexander lost to the Street Profits in a really fast match. Nothing really exciting happened. It was a boring episode of main event, basically. Now on to SmackDown. Drew McIntyre was scheduled to team up with the Viker Raiders to take on Baron Corbin, Riddick Moss, and Jinder Mahal or Shanky at ringside. But after Drew McIntyre made his entrance backstage, the Viker Raiders were getting the butts handed to him by the bad guys. The heels. Then the heels rushed out, attacked Drew McIntyre, beat him up. Then McIntyre fought back, cleaned house. The only person he never got his hands on was Baron Corbin, because Baron Corbin played it smart and took off up on the stage. Smart faking Corbin. Save it for WrestleMania when you're going to kick McIntyre's butt. I hope win the match fair and square. If McIntyre wins, I'll still be happy with it. It's just going to be a great match at WrestleMania. Sasha Banks was scheduled to face Queen Vega one-on-one. -on -one. But the match changed. Instead, we have Sasha Banks and Naomi taking on Natalia and Shayna Baszler. They're now going to be added to the title match at WrestleMania, making it fail full way for the women's tag team titles alongside Come Out of the Vega, Liv Morgan, Ray Ripley. I'm okay with this. More women, the better. To give all these women a chance to showcase at WrestleMania what they could do. Um, really short match, but it was worth watching until the ending. I'll get to that in a couple of seconds here. Minutes, I mean. Natalia had a nice Falcon Arrow on I Know Me. Shayna Baszler applied a knee bar. And I know me kicked free. Then I know me, Shane and Basin made a double team make your wish on I know me. Um, I know me eventually tagged in Sasha Banks. She had a nice top rope meter roll on Natalia. Outside of the ring, I know me had a cross body off the still steps on Shane and Basin. Now, this is the ending. That was lame. Natalia knocked into Vega, who was up on the ropes, trying to cause a distraction. So both went and fell down. Natalia turned around and fell purposely on her knees and just stood there and allowed Sasha Banks to run and hit her with the knees to the face for the one, two, three. Like, what the heck? Natalia could have easily gone up and reversed that move to the sharp shooter, but just the way she can land on her knees and stood there stunned like, like a statue just took away from the match for me. Uh, Rick Boogs uh, faced Jay Uso one-on-one. -on -one. And Rick Boogs won, then him and Nakamura get the title shot against the Usos of WrestleMania. Quick match, Rick Boogs pretend his leg was hurt, but it wasn't. They deliver a couple, like, sit-up suplexes on Jay Uso. Um, the power slam for the grill press slam into the power slam. For the one, two, three, fast match. I am not happy these, this match happened at WrestleMania. It should be the goddamn Viker Raiders. That feud with them and the Usos that ended badly last week on SmackDown. It would make sense for the Viker Raiders and the Usos to finish the rivalry at WrestleMania. But no, instead we're getting Rick Boogs and Nakamura. Don't get me wrong, I'm a big fan of the guys. But they should not be getting the title shot against the Usos at WrestleMania. It should be the Viker Raiders. Like, common sense wise. Um, now into the two matches of SmackDown that were good. Rick O'Shea defending his brand new Intercontinental. Championship title reign, very first title defense against the former champs, Zambi Zane. Great match. This was your main event last week. Was the opening match that was great. This week was the main event, which was even greater. Both guys put on one heck of a performance. Check this match out, folks. Ricochet chopped Zami Zane right into the ropes. Um, Zami uh, caught Ricochet coming for an attempted bulldog and just blasted him with the blue thunder bomb. Uh, Ricochet had a nice hurricanrana and then jump up drop kick, knock down Zami. Zami um, caught Ricochet up on the top rope. They're both men were fighting. Ricochet chopped him down. Zami Zane quickly jumped back up, had a nice overhead suplex off the top rope on Ricochet. Uh, Ricochet went for other moves. Zami counted it. Nice, beautiful, massive sit down power bump. Almost won the match. He went for a suplex. Ricochet counted it into a sunset flip. Almost won the match to keep the title. It was that back and forth, even and close. Um, Ricochet caught Sammy coming at him with the recoil. And then hit the top rope, 630 splash for the 1 2 3 to keep the title. Now, the last match on SmackDown. Well, it was a really good match until the ending, which was a, 
something major happened, folks. Um, during the match, um, by the way, Pete Dunne is now on SmackDown. Instead of calling Pete Dunne, they're going to call him Butch. Yeah. I like to find out who's responsible for that name change backstage. I want that person to get the, his ass or her ass fired out that door. You don't change the guy's name for the bruiser weight Pete Dunne to Butch. He's not a freaking Butch whacker. He's the freaking bruiser weight. I ass kicking machine. Now he's called Butch. And the way they got him dressed, it's like, geez, my, I ain't going to take this guy seriously at all. The way they got him looking. His name. Anyways, he occupies Seamus Rich Holland to ringside. Um, Big E caught Sheamus coming off the top rope, had a nice belly to belly suplex. Um, he went for out of move, and Sheamus snap mirrored him off the ropes and hit the 10 beats of the Bowery. Uh, Kobe tagged in, Rich Holland got in. Kobe had a nice jump up, springboard off the rope, middle rope, drop kick, knocking him down. Then hit a springboard axe handle, knocking him down again. Sheamus tagged in, Kobe hit him with a springboard axe handle. Hit the boom drop on Sheamus. Hit the SOS. Rich Holden quickly made the save. Now, this is where it gets scary, folks. Outside of the ring, Rich Holden caught Big E coming at him and had delivered an overhead suplex. Big E landed on his neck. His head, I mean. And the way he landed, and after he was done, he wasn't moving at all. I was scared. I have, like, flashbacks. Me and my dad, when we watched it back to the old days. Back of the attitude era where Draws was feuding with the Road Warriors and Hawk and Draws was having that fan up with the Titan Tron. And uh Draws landed wrong, going off the Titan Tron, landed on his head, and to this day has been paralyzed, neck down, and has been in a wheelchair ever since. That was why I was afraid of a Big E. Me and my dad fought. Because Big E wasn't moving at first. Um you could see Pat McAfee and Michael Cole. Yelling on the mics like we need medical attention out here now. Um, they went off camera so you couldn't see what was happening. Um, COVID came off the top rope. Sheamus hit an uh, awful looking bro kick for the one, two, three. I get it, they probably did that to wrap the match up over what happened. Totally understand that. Um, during commercial, they um stretcher Big E out to the back on a stretcher. Uh, Big E delivered us an update on his Twitter account. Um, if you haven't seen yet, check it out. He has suffered a broken neck, but thank God he's not paralyzed. He said, I can move my fingers and my toes. Even he was scared at first. That's what happened to him, but he said he's relieved he, he can, you know, has feelings throughout his body, but he has suffered a broken neck. Unfortunately, he's going to be out for quite a while, which is a shame. Get well soon, Big E. You're an amazing, talented performer. You should be universal and multiple time WWE Champion by now, so hopefully when you do return, you get the title back again. So there you have it for SmackDown main event. Definitely check out the New Day versus Sheamus Rich Holland. Until the incident with Big E. Uh, definitely check out Zami Zayn versus Ricochet for the Intercontinental Championship. Again okay, now. Um, I played rational games throughout my life. Um, by far my favorite rational games. I'm going to quickly list them off. My top five of all time are SmackDown Shut Your Mouth. SmackDown Here Comes the Pain. Due to the backstage stuff, like we can talk to superstars. And the outcome affects, like, you get plus five respect against Goldberg or negative five respect against Go Jericho, something like that. Um, I also liked it when those superstars had different attires for costumes, so you could choose which attire. Not now, these days, when you get, like, freaking six Hulk Hogan's or. Eight Rey Mysterios is because they got different outfits. You don't need eight different Rey Mysterios in the game. I I get it. Fans love that because you can have like an eight man Rey Mysterio match. I like it back in the day. They should just go back to that one superstar, different attire options, so that way they can put more people in the game. Because W Two K Twenty Two Rick Boogs do drop are not in the freaking game at all. There's people in the game that should be in the game that they're not because they so focus so much on having us having, like I said, almost eight different Mysterios, three different Undertakers, two different Hulk Hogan's, on and on. You could have just taken that one superstar, different attires, and you could put Rick Boogs to drop other people in the game. Uh, I remember I um, was a fan of the WCW games back in the day um, because the graphics were bad. 
But what I loved about it was the little videos you got on the corner of the screen where it was like a real live promo from them. Like, when you chose DDP, he'd be like, somebody's going to get the self high five diamond cutter. If you chose Macho Man, you got a little video of Macho Man. Oh, yeah, you chose the Macho Man. I dig that, yeah. If you chose Hulk Hogan, you'd do like the whole guitar thing with the NWO title belt, stuff like that, which was cool. Um, if you chose Kevin Nash, you'd be like, Nah, don't pick me. Nah, don't pick me. That was a funny one. Um, that was my third favorite. Um, number four for me, um, it was a toss-up between No Mercy for the N64, but there was an other game I played many years ago. I forget the name of it, unfortunately. It was for the Sega Genesis. Man, that game was cool. Because you could play as Crush, um, Adam Bomb, Owen Hart, the late great Owen Hart, um, Man, a lot of people we could play as back then. Shawn Michaels, Bruce Bob Beefcake. It was just a cool game for Sega Genesis. Now, my fifth favorite wrestling game of all time. This is actually number one. This is the top one for me. WrestleMania 2000 for the Nintendo 64. I just love that game from top to finish. Just like how you can see in the background, if your name was in bronze and gold, you knew you were having a match, it was a title match. You can have different matches against different people. You can play for the whole season, have different matches against different superstars every time. Um, just liked it. Now, me and my good friend Chris Gocha, we both bought WWE 2K22. It's had some issues already. It just came out last night. Um, when he uploaded his game for the very first time, he got everything. When I did it, I got a one on one matchup. That was it with eight different superstars to choose from. I was like, what the hell? I thought at first, like, is this a two to row I gotta go through? I read online that people having the same problem. Thinking the same thing. It wasn't. Um, so eventually the game refreshed, gave me every option you could play with now, all the matches and stuff. So I was like, okay. And then today, uh Chris told me that the same thing that happened to me happened to him. And I read online, we both did. Well, I know I did for sure. I don't know if he did. Um there's been a lot of glitches, a lot of issues happening. Already, it's just been released today. Now, DDV had um, informed the gaming company that they weren't going to renew the contract depending on how successful this game was. Because of previous 2K games. That's not a good start. If you want the DDV to renew your contract, give you lots of money to make video games for them when this is huge issues are having already. That's not good. Um, so anyways, hope we're got fingers crossed to the game's good. So, me and him are going to do this very friendly GM competition mode. We're both going to draft superstars we both like. We're going to put the popping area down as low as they can so they cost cheaper, which they do. I've checked that out for sure. If you put the popping area down to five, they don't cost a whole lot of money. Um, I found it, which is nice. Um, we're going to build them up. We're going to do the 50 week fame. We're going to do our best to show you. I got the matches for like the week, the month. Who did better shows? Who got the better money? How was the matches? Um, it's going to be interesting who gets who for the picks. Because there's a lot of people we both like. Like, for instance, we both are huge fans of Ray Ripley. So it's going to be interesting which of us gets a draft here, right? So we're going to do another coin toss. I try my hardest to find two hit of coin damn work. Um, so I hope I got my fingers crossed. I get the first pick. I know exactly who I'm picking. And I think I know who he's going to pick as well. And if he gets to pick this person first, my backup pick is going to shock him for sure. Because I'm a big fan of this team. This, but not, sorry, not team. I'm a big fan of these people. This person. Maybe that's a hint, Chris. Maybe it's a tag team I'm going to pick if you pick my very first draft pick guy. Or maybe it's a single guy. He ain't going to know until it's a war, folks. We're going to definitely do the video of the draft. So stay tuned. Um, got my notebook here if I picks who I want like who I want to pick. And like I said, if he takes a pick, I got a backup of somebody else I like. Um, now also in the game, um, you can only have the Universal DDV or SmackDown Raw win them champions. I don't know how he's going if he's going to do this or not, but I am going to pretend on my show SmackDown. By the way, I'm doing SmackDown. Who's doing my night Raw? Because I like Pepsi. He likes Coke. Even though today I had a bottle of Coke. Anyways, it's not the point. That's how we decide which show we're going to be. 
Uh, we haven't decided which general manager we're going to be yet. But anyways, uh, my show, I'm going to pretend that there's a tag team champions and then there's an intercontinental champion. To make it more interesting, I, I'm going to pretend there's title matches between two superstars and say that on my YouTube video for the week and stuff. To make, you know, more interest, to make it more realistic, more love up to date. Maybe one of the up... Hey, you know what? Here's a question. 2K22 company made the game for all those issues you have had. Disappoint a lot of fans like me and my good friend Chris Gocher. Maybe you guys should reward us with having us be able to defend the United States Intercontinental and Tag Team titles on GM mode. That'd be a big, huge thank you gift for troubles we've had with the game. There you have it, folks. Stay safe, everybody. Too sweet. Bye.